just oh. broke it. Fuck. <laughs> Don't worry. No, no. It's... Don't worry. It will be repotted right afterwards. <laughs> it's very easy to propagate. I, I know it is. I just I'm just going to lay on the soil just like that. All right, so we stopped at the greenhouse because we were outside. We got into a massive downpour, as you could see, because I'm soaked. Andrew soaked. I'm soaked. <laughs> yeah, but he's going to show us a little bit more around this uh, beautiful greenhouse that you have here. Obviously, some of this stuff is for sale and some of it's not. Correct. This is our, our main glass house. This is more of our, our retail space. This also houses a lot of our big stock plants that yeah. we do a lot of our own self propagation in addition for supplements, but we do have some really cool things happening at the moment. I mean, I'm digging this this Hoya, and I already, like, when I was running in, I saw this Hoya Carii, which is so awesome to see it in bloom. It's gorgeous, and you're pointing out the nectar yeah. earlier, and... Uh, Let's see if I could show you, so see, see this? See this? This is why I tell people, like, don't have this flowering over, like, your cherished pieces of furniture, <laughs> you know? Yeah. We, we definitely take some of these things for granted in a greenhouse situation because yeah. we can afford to be more yeah. haphazard. And yeah, exactly. We can make messes and it's fine, but in the home environment, it's definitely different. Yeah. Um, this glass house is a challenge to keep things alive, in sp especially during the winter months oh. because we have two major propane heaters, okay. whereas the home in a way is a little more gentle, but the humidity here drops just as rapidly yes. as it does in a home. So yeah. we do suffer a lot of damage in the winter months, but then things just bounce back yeah. once the day length increases and things like that. Now, is it how, when was this greenhouse constructed or erected? This particular one, I believe, was built in the 70s. Okay, so relatively so recently-ish. Recently new, yeah. it's still single pane glass, yeah. um, but there was a greenhouse here before this. There are some photographs of a um, a, a horse-drawn sleigh wow. coming up Greenhouse Road that we just walked down wow. with the, one of the old greenhouses and a whole cold frame set up along the side. Oh my God. So um, food production was bigger here when the hotel was initially starting, yeah. uh, but not so much anymore because the quantity of guests that we have now. Yeah. I mean, back then it was maybe 50 to 100 people in yeah. a day and it, we were closed during the winter months. So. Um, we had more arable land and things like that, but it's definitely converted much more into gardens. For the greenhouse, one of our major roles here is to produce all of the crops for the gardens, right. which you've walked through and you've seen all of that. Yeah. We produce about 1,500 to 2,000 flats of annuals. Mm -hmm. And we do our vegetative propagation. And we, have, we house a bunch of tender plant material from giant rosemaries to giant florals to agaves and bromeliads and you name it. Yeah. So, but we also have some groovy things hiding in various places. And do these ever make it out there, are these crassulas, or are they a little bit more stuck here? I am reluctant to touch them and move them outside. They, yeah. They've been here much longer than I've been. I yeah. think we have a tag on this one. This was planted in 96, okay. so we're at 20-something years yeah. already with this one. And they seem to weather the winter then fine, too. Oh, here. they're fine. Yeah. We do get buggy issues. Yeah. They they get susceptible. Some varieties it seems to yeah. seem to favor things like mealy bugs. Yeah, Aphids don't seem to yeah. bother them. Also, something I like to express in our greenhouses is we use a beneficial bug program. Okay, so we do is, integrated pest management. We do, yeah. Um, what, what, what's, what do you do? Because I, I use it in my home too. I try yeah. to get people over the hump of like using integrated pest management in their home. I yeah. mean, because you said your entomology yeah. background. Yeah. So that is not my forte. Yeah. Um, but I've been involved it in many yeah. circumstances. So what we really purchased from BioBest, yeah. the company we use, is like the aphidiuses, like mm -hmm. aphidius irvi, colmeni. Yeah. Um, for the mealybugs, we've had limited success with cryptomeria, the mm -hmm. crypts. Crips, That's yeah. the, I think, is it truly cryptomeria? Cryptolamus, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the thing with the beneficial insects is that they're affected by day length as well. Yeah. So when we really need them badly, yeah. not there for Yeah, us. and the so. crypts, like, I have a tendency, like, I'm like, I corral them off my windows. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, literally. You're, you're like, you're, well, you have to investigate, you're like, yeah. oh, nope, you're a good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so they're, they're fluffy, too. And then, tell me a little bit about this, because this seems like you can't move. Yeah, <laughs> so this thing is not going away anytime soon. This is our uh, bougainvillea. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? I think bougainvillea. it's bougainvillea, bougainvillea. Yeah. yeah. 
And this has definitely been here since the beginning of the uh, greenhouse. And unfortunately, this plant is one of the main thing that harbors our pests. Oh. Aphids and things, mm. and we can't quite get rid from it. Yeah. And it's challenging to, to maintain, but it gets a lot of haircuts. Yeah. Probably gets like three or four haircuts. Yeah. And you have to be careful because it has thorns on it, mm -hmm. but uh, passing guests might get it in the <laughs> eye, so it needs frequent maintenance. But it's still beautiful nonetheless. Oh, look at the sedum, so beautiful. Rocky tail. Yeah. You actually have a really nice selection. And these are things that people could purchase. Correct, yeah, most of this is for purchase. If anything has a red tag, it's a stock plant. I had to tell you, the price is, makes me cry a little bit coming from the city. <laughs> oh. I mean, our lithops are nothing, I think. This is, this is actually one of my favorite Kalenkoe's. It's a stock plant. But Which Kalenkoe is that again? This is Beverdii. Beverdii. Yeah, so people actually could come down here, purchase a few plants. Do you sell outdoor plants too? We do, yeah. We have okay. perennial selection, uh, woody plants on occasion, depending. But our, uh, for the retail portion of this business, it's certainly much more focused on houseplants. Yeah. Because that's what our market really has. Pelargoniums, yeah. I know. This one's really a beautiful lacy foliage. That one, I think, is evergreen. I don't know the sp specific epithet of that one. Yeah. They're one of the easy things to propagate for us. That one smells actually quite nice if you rub it long enough. I like the fern leaf foliage of that one. I use that in a lot yeah. of bedding outside as well because mm -hmm. of the texture. Yeah, so how do you come up with the designs for the gardens outside? Because you said you're like a little bit more of a bedding guy. You're, you're doing landscape design. You have free reign to design how you want to design. So take me through that process a little bit. The show garden is really my piece that I work on. Yeah. I mean, of course, I steal ideas from everybody. We yeah. talk about it, we chat about it. And we're coming up on ordering season. so. We used to order all of our plugs and our plants for the garden mid-September. Mm -hmm. And I have to order seeds too. So it's, it's a thematic garden, mm -hmm. so it changes every year. Um, so this year's theme, I don't know if you saw in the beginning, we tried to make it apparent, maybe it's not, is Garden Jubilation mm -hmm. because it's the 150 year anniversary. So for that particular garden design, it was based on reintroducing some of those classic bedding plants that we maybe take for granted day by day, yeah. but also taking some more modern design and some more rigid plantings. That was very Victorian. They liked solid beds of things and playing with heights. But So I tried to play with some heights and more that cake tiered. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I think was uh, a byproduct of that, whether you intended it or not, is that when I just glanced out there the first day that I got at Mohonk Mountain, there were a ton of butterflies, like the pollinators were off the hook. Yeah. But I think when you're planting such a colorful garden, it attracts a lot of uh, potential pollinators. Yeah, people always ask specifically, oh, is this a butterfly garden? It's like, <laughs> no, I don't plant butterfly gardens because yeah. I have so much gardening to do. Yeah. And uh, most of the plant material that I, I put in there is in the mint family, things yes. like that. Yeah. Um, they particularly really love that verbena bonariensis. Mm. Verbena with the purple, stick. with the purple yeah. on the stick, yeah. It has the perfect landing yeah. pad, yeah. perfect nectar, perfect color, mm -hmm. and then monarchs go gaga over it. Yeah. And uh, we didn't just, the, the monarch population seems good here because we have those things to attract yeah. them. Um, and they seem to have a time frame when they arrive. Mm -hmm. So it's just in the past month or so that we've noticed them. I'm like yeah. touching all of your, um, I'm like, oh, I love this. And it's like the ones that are your stock plants. <laughs> I'm like, I like the big stock plants, you know? I Yeah. Um, people get a, a big kick out of that. I think Echnocerus yeah. is the genus of that yeah. one. And it put on a beautiful floral display. We have luck in this greenhouse flowering a lot of our succulents because this, since it's single pane glass, it gets yeah. drafty. Yeah. And so these, these heaters are cranking along, but it still gets to like 40 something degrees in this corner. So yeah. gives them that. That little stress that, that, that they need. makes them want to flower. A long way too. It does, it really does. No, you get a really cool collection. It's yeah. eclectic. Do you do um, the walking iris in the America? I, I don't. Is it a popular one here? Yeah, it acts almost like a spider plant. Like a spider plant, it, yeah, yeah. They're very easy to propagate, and they have very beautiful iris-like flowers. Do you think it would work as a house plant? I think it would, yeah. but I think it would flower more reliably in a higher light situation. Okay. This is like Senecio macroglossus. It's a variegated version, wax ivy. Oh, Peperomia dulliberformis. This is a really interesting one. Do you have luck with English ivy as a house plant? Yes, I, I have to say yes. Okay. 
I actually had to remove it from my home relatively recently within the last two years because it was, one, it was attached to my wall and I had construction workers come in and they had to replace windows and my ivy was all over my windows. But on the other side of where I had my ivy growing, it got scale. Okay. But I kind of left it up. It was like kind of one of those things where it was like it was a vector for... So you had those plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, for me, it's worked well, and it's worked well in both a northeast and a southwest-facing window. Oh, look at this one's in bloom, too. The Hoya Carnosa. Oh, somebody, a little pollinator was on it. Oh, that is just beautiful. That is just stunning. Oh, I love seeing Hoya blooms. Is this a podocarpus? Uh, yes. I like the look of this tree. We, we do use podocarpus in the spa, yeah. in the solarium. I'm shocked how tough that plant is. Yeah. And it's in a very sunny section. Yeah. I think you go to Longwood and there, there's sides of them in their conservatory. Yeah. Your ripsalis are pretty amazing. <laughs> the tropical weeds. I have, well, can I show you a rickrack cactus? Yeah. That's pretty good. Did you see that? We've had this one for a few years. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so. But uh, we definitely owe this coll these collections um, to some of our previous managers, yeah. um, even superintendents, whose uh, definitely vision for these plants have, have brought us through to this point, which is yeah. really cool. That's why they can be at this size. And this is where you do a lot of your potting then? Yeah. So this is our, these two greenhouses are major production greenhouses. Yeah. Do you want to see my orchid hut real quick? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite spots here in the greenhouse. You get a little corner all to yourself. Exactly. This is my <laughs> office. That's what we call it. Um, and so the orchid thing has really become one of my passions in the past four years because um, I joined the Mid Hudson Orchid Society. Um, and I'm endlessly learning about orchids. You, mm -hmm. you never stop because the, the, the family of plants is gigantic. Yeah. And uh, they're so vastly different from one another. Um, and I have good successes and I have some great failures too. I've sectioned off the back of this greenhouse, uh, which is our coolest one, and I have yeah. a, an additional heater in here. Orchids don't necessarily need to be hot and tropical all the time. Right. It's just not necessarily how they all work. But my thing was more about the humidity. Mm -hmm. And so I have this thing as automated as possible because I can only allow myself to be in here like three times a week. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd get distracted and not do my actual job out yeah, there. So yeah. this is just something I run into and do first thing in the morning. Like, oh, how's everything doing? Because orchids are just slow moving. You yeah. got to be patient. And it takes a lifetime to really learn how to cultivate these guys. Just out of curiosity in your newness of orchids, mm -hmm. what's your experience with growing them in terracotta versus maybe a plastic planter. And I see this one's kind of like glomming on to the terracotta a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun to be able to see orchids do what they yeah. actually want to do in yeah. nature, especially the Phalaenopsis, which is such a, I don't know, let's say it's a generic orchid that we see in the trade, but uh, we take it for granted sometimes. Well, especially when it's at your supermarket and so many different right. frilly shades. But look at the root system on this thing. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty intense. spectacular. It's, I mean, I just love this, that it's like, you know, because I, I have um, recognized that some people have a preference in growing them in like a plastic versus, you know, terracotta. Yeah. Does this dry out too soon? I guess it depends on what you're... It depends on your situation. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Since I'm in this nice humid house, yeah. I get away easily with bark. Yeah. Bark is fine. Mm -hmm. But if I was to be in my home and I lived a very busy life cycle, mm -hmm. I'd be growing things in a lot more moss probably right. or sphagnum. Um, but I just want to point out this particular phalaenopsis. It's a generic light phalaenopsis, but I actually received it from uh, our previous president here at Mohawk, who just recently passed. Um, Bert. But this is Bert. Yeah. So this is, we call it Bert. This is oh. Bert's orchid. So I'm doing everything to nurture this plant. And it, it seems to be thriving. And it put on a beautiful display this past winter, it put yeah. out two spikes, and um, it's just fun to see it do its thing. Well, it's I think that's just like one of those marvelous things about having a plant is that some of these have those stories. And when yeah. I had asked you whether there are any kind of plants from the original time yeah. of the uh, founders, but you know, here you have somebody who's part of the family history 
and you will always remember this plant, this generic white phalaenopsis as Bert. <laughs> Bert, I know. It's funny, we get attached to things like yeah. that. Um, we actually do have something. It's not quite orchid flowering season. Orchid, yeah. orchid season is more like late winter into spring and summer. Uh, but here's Paphia pellum sucaculii. A nice lady slipper. Lady slipper. Um, this one's a straight species, whereas most of your Paphia pellums are complex hybrids. Mm -hmm. And I never really had luck with these guys until I got into this greenhouse because I used to grow all my, all these, or most of these orchids were in my house, yeah. which I just recently sold. Yeah. 400 square feet. It's almost like a Brooklyn apartment <laughs> in the middle of Kerhonkson. And I had a beautiful south facing window section and I had, my house was stuffed. My poor partner, I mean, <laughs> he has clothes, I have plants. And so I, well, I, I have watched a lot of your videos and I, I somewhat can relate. Yeah. Maybe I don't have the same quantity, <laughs> but um, it was all orchids. And the thing is, a, it, you got if you had an 800 square foot, it would have been, you know, even, double. Even, yeah. <laughs> what else? Um, I love Miltoniopsis. I don't know if you've ever no. tempted with Miltoniopsis. Yeah. It's, um, in the Oncidium Alliance. So they have this particular structure where they have this main pseudobulb and the, the way the foliage falls. But this is a variety called um, Lillian Nakamoto. Mm. And they are fragrant. This one's slightly fragrant right now, but they're more so fragrant in the morning. Okay. So that's what's great about orchids is that there's actually a lot of fragrant ones. Mm. And it's enjoyable when you have a fragrant houseplant. So. Exactly. And here's a path. I mean, it's vastly different from yeah, that one. Yeah, very different. This has the, the Rothschildianum in it. So it has this very big strap leaf mm -hmm. foliage. But this could take me five to ten years before I ever see this thing flower. Mm -hmm. So it's, it requires significant dedication. Mm -hmm. I, feel like I have a Vanda flowering that's up there. Um, some hybrid that I'm not yeah. familiar with. That's, so it's a mix of cool, uh, cool orchids to hot orchids. Yeah. And uh, I have success with some. and none with others. That's the thing, I love that you're like experimenting and you know, perhaps some of this could actually make its way into you know, some of the scenery. At, at yeah, I mean, my, my goal here with this orchid hut is to have something to display in the winter months for mm -hmm. people to enjoy in the house. Yeah. Thanks for showing us the little orchid hobby house. No problem. And um, it looks like it's still raining or not raining? I think we're okay. Okay. You want to try to venture outside? I think we should. I think we should try to venture outside and at least see some of the gardens. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I do it every time. We do it every time we water. I'll show you the, the stock one if you want to see that real quick. Interested in developing a deeper relationship with the people and plants around you? Then check out my book, How to Make a Plant Love You. Cultivate green space in your home and heart. More information up on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And if you're looking for more tactical plant care, then you could turn to the Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first online audiovisual course on houseplant cultivation, care, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.